All right. And once we're done with the nav bar, let's set up a structure for all our pages. Now, before we do that, though, let me just quickly mention that if you're bothered with the small margin on a contact one, you can simply go back and then add here margin. And of course, we're looking for margin right in this case, and we can set it equal to zero because, of course, all the links get this margin right. So if we remove it, then of course, we'll not have that space all the way on the right hand side. And as far as the structure, we want to set up the page class. And then we also want to set up the footer. So this is going to be a structure for all the pages. And then in different pages, of course, we'll add different content, but all of them will have the nav bar, will have the footer, as well as the page. And you'll see once we get there. So first, let's go back to index HTML. And then right after the nav, we have end of nav. And let's just say here main or page or whatever. So some kind of comment, copy and paste, and we'll say end of main. And now let's set up a main element. And let's add a class of page. And then after the main one, this is where we want to set up a footer. So let me go here with footer. And then I'm going to go with footer element. And as far as the class, since there might be a footer also in some kind of card or something like that, I always prefer setting it up explicitly as page footer. But of course, this is the preference. Technically, you can just select the footer in the CSS and you'll still be in good shape. And as far as the footer, I want to go with paragraph here. So then we'll go with special HTML character. So I'm going to go here with ampersand and then we'll say copy. So of course, now we'll get that copyright sign. And then I just want to set up the date. Now, for time being, we'll hard code that. And then later on in the video, we'll actually set up the JavaScript code as well. So let's go here with ID and date. So that's what we'll use in JavaScript. And like I said, for now, we'll just hard code. We'll say 2021. And then right next to the span, we'll set up another one. So still within the same paragraph, we'll go with second span. And here, let's add a class and we'll say footer logo for logo. And then let's just write whatever is the logo of the site. So in my case, it is simply recipes. But of course, you can add different logos as well. And then right outside of the span, but still within the paragraph, we'll go with built by and I'm just going to use a shameless plug. And I'll set up a link back to johnsmilk.com. So I'll go with href. Then I want to go to the big screen. And I'm going to be looking for johnsmilk.com. I'm going to grab the href, copy and paste. And of course, now I have a link. And let's just type over here, coding attic. So that should do it for the HTML part, for the structure for all the pages. Now, of course, we just want to swing back to the main CSS. And I'll grab this comment one, and then copy and paste. And we'll set up one for footer as well. So let me copy this one, copy and paste. And then let's set up one for footer. And you know, I'm actually going to copy paste one more time. So that way, I can set up the next comment as well. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to leave it blank. Now we'll actually start with a footer. And only then we'll worry about the page. And you'll see in a second why. For the time being, what we can do on a page is just set up our famous background red. Since that way, we'll clearly see what we're styling. And let's just start by targeting the page footer. So let's say here page footer. And I want to go with height equals to four areas. So add some kind of height. Then we'll also go with text align center. So now all of the text is going to be in the center. Then we want to add background. And let's go with CSS variable. So in this case, I'm looking for the value of black. And then of course, we also want to add some kind of color. In this case, we'll go with color and we're looking for the white one. So now, of course, all of the text is white apart from the link. But I'm noticing here that, of course, I have the height, but I'm not placing the content in the center. So actually, a better approach is removing this text line center and we'll go with display and we'll set it equal to flex. And then let's align them in the center vertically and also justify content, which, of course, is going to do that horizontally. So both justify content as well as the align items 
are set to center. Now we still have some default margins, and therefore we'll target the footer and more specifically paragraph. And we'll say margin bottom is equal to zero. And once we have that, I just want to add colors to the link as well as the logo. And in order to accomplish that, we simply go with footer logo, then comma, and then we'll go with page footer and then link. And now, of course, I want to go with color. And we'll be looking for the primary one. So once we set it up, of course, now the logo as well as the link have this primary color. And if I take a look at the complete project, that's what I'm shooting for. Now, the next thing that I want to do is set up the page height. Because if you notice at the moment, of course, yes, we do have the nav bar, we have the footer, but I actually want the page to take up the remaining space. And how we can do that? Well, we can use min height and we'll use the calc function because both the nav bar as well as the footer have some kind of height and first let's start with some kind of width so in here let's say background red and we'll go with width and width always will be 90 percent of the screen size so that's why we have view with units and of course i also want to set up some kind of max width and this will be equal to my css variable so let's go over here with max width and eventually what you'll notice is that the content of the page is going to be aligned exactly like the nav bar because if you remember we also use the max width in the nav center so that's why both of them will be in one line now of course we have no content so you cannot see that yet but trust me eventually it's going to be there then we want to go with margin zero and auto so now we'll always place it in the center and then i also want to add a little bit of padding on the top so we'll say here, padding top, and let's just go with two REMs. Now, of course, you can clearly see our red box, which essentially is going to be our page. And lastly, what we want is set up that min height. So for all the pages, there's always going to be this min height. And I want this to be 100%, but I want to subtract the height of the nav bar as well as the height of the footer. So we can do that by setting up min height then we'll go with calc function and let's just go with 100 view heights so this is going to be 100 percent of the screen minus and then of course we want to add six rems plus the four rems and what you'll notice that regardless of the screen size this is going to take at least 100 percent of the height now of course if we'll add more content it's going to be bigger and you'll see that in later pages but at least minimum it's going to be 100% minus the nav bar as well as the footer. And then before we add that to all the pages, I actually want to go to the app.js. I want to target the date element, and I just want to showcase how we can add this dynamically. So for time being, let's just remove this code. Essentially, let's just remove the current year because we're not going to be hard coding that. And I want to swing back to app.js. And in here, right after the nav button, we'll go with const date. So now we're selecting get element. And of course, I'm looking for that ID. I'm going to say date. And in here, we'll just go with const current year. And if you want a current year in JavaScript, we just simply go with new date. We invoke it. And we have a function by the name of get full year. So now, of course, we just need to go with date. So that's the element then text content and that is equal to the current year so this way we'll always have the current year we won't have to hard code this and then lastly once we have this structure i actually want to take it copy and paste and set it up in all the pages and before you get mad about it before you get mad about the fact that we still need to copy and paste in all the pages let me just say one more time since we're just using straight up HTML and CSS, we don't. We don't have any concept of templates or components that we have in React. So yes, if we have multiple pages, there's really no other way. And of course, once we set up structure for all the pages, then we'll worry about index.html. And then one by one, we'll add code, meaning the HTML and CSS, to the rest of the pages. So once you have the structure, since we'll use it in all the pages, and since we have all the correct links, whether that is for CSS or for JavaScript, 
I want to take all of this and then one by one, I want to add it to all the pages because in here, yes, we have some boilerplate code, but essentially what we want is just select everything and then overwrite with our current code that is coming from the index HTML. And of course, the only thing you need to do over here is just change the title. And since this is 404 page, since this is an error page, I'm going to go here with error. And if you want to add more text, of course, you can do that. But in my case, I won't. And then just so I can understand what is happening, where I have the page, I'll also add a heading one and I'll say error page. And again, we need to do that for all the pages. We want to do that for about contact recipes, single recipe tag template and tags. And of course, I'll stop the video because I don't think it's very useful for you to watch how I do to all the pages. But I strongly suggest you do the same because that way it's going to be easier later on when we set up the pages. And once you copy and paste our page structure, your website should look something like this, where in all the pages, you'll have the nav bar, you'll have the footer, you'll also have the page with a heading one with the name of the page. And of course, a title that matches wherever is the file name over here. And essentially from the nav bar, you should be able to navigate to all the pages as well as the 404. So the 404, of course, is the one where we need to go to the URL. And let's just say 404 HTML. And effectively, this is an error page. If the user is looking for some kind of resource on a server that doesn't exist. And just to showcase how is that going to look like in the actual dynamic application, let me just find here Gatsby version three. So this is the original project. Notice if I'm looking for some kind of page that doesn't exist, let's say users page, we'll see this 404. So that's the one that we'll set up here in the error page. And with all of this in place, now, of course, we can keep working on a project. And up next, I actually want to work on a homepage where we have this banner. 